Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cotswold Bees channel. We've got uh, a couple of jobs we want to do today and it's all begun with a hive that I've got where the old queen's starting to get a bit on the old side and actually she's starting to lay a little bit erratically. Now she's okay at the moment but if I left things to do their natural course what would happen is the bees would kill her, they'd try and raise a new queen and get her mated. But we're getting towards the end of August and that's not really likely to happen and the problem is if they don't get a new queen mated very soon, they might have problems going through the winter or more likely they'll go through the winter and then in the spring, they'll have a new queen that isn't mated properly and they'll just die out. So I'm gonna take things into my own hands and also while I'm doing it, do another job. So the first thing we're going to do is open the hive up. We're gonna have a look. We're gonna find the old queen and unfortunately she's got to go to the great hive in the sky. We're gonna replace her with a new queen, but we're also gonna split the hive into two so that I've got a nucleus hive that I can take through the winter and that'll give me another hive in the new year uh, that I can either keep or I can sell to a customer. Now normally I'd have my own queens that I'd raise but as many of you know I had a bit of an eye problem earlier in the year where uh, I actually detached the retina from my right eye so all I've been trying to do all year is catch up and unfortunately queen rearing's gone by the wayside. So what I've done is I've actually bought in some new queens uh, from a very reputable supplier, one that I've used before, and I could do with some new blood anyway, so that's a good thing. And we're going to use those queens to replace the old queen and also do the split. These queens come in a, a jiffy bag, believe it or not, through the post and in cages, but they come with attendant workers. And one of the things we've got to do before we can actually put the new queens into the hive is actually remove the worker bees. And that way, when we put the new queen in, She'll take time for the bees in the hive to actually eat through the fondant to get to her. Her pheromone will have gone through the whole hive and hopefully all the bees should accept her nicely. But it is important to take those workers out and so that's the next job we're going to do. Now normally I'll probably do this inside but I'm going to actually do it outside today so that we can see it easily and uh, hopefully you'll see how you can do it if you buy a new queen in. So we're going to take the whole cage and it's this side that slides off. So we're going to pop that into the veil like this and what always happens is when you're showing anybody else how to do this it always goes horribly wrong and this is going to prove a problem to open up but just to prove that not everything always goes the way you want it to here we go we can open it up we can see some of the workers are coming out already so we can pop those out let them have their freedom and here's some more you can just see the queen in there she's got a white spot on her head she's a 2021 queen just let some more of the workers out there's the queen just try and keep her in if the worst comes to worst i can grab her by the wings and just hang on to her just let some more workers out there there's another one there's some more there's the queen she's out so now i've just got to grab that queen by the wing there we go, I've got her now. I can let all the other workers out. And hopefully they, they won't attack Carol with the camera, because that would be unfortunate and might be a cause of matrimonial disharmony. And there we go, I can pop my queen back in. Oops, a daisy. There you go, you see, it's always the, always the way when you do it for a camera. Pop the queen back in. There she is, she's back in there, and that's fine. So I can just do the next one. Let's see if we can do this one any better. Again, open it up inside the veil. Try and let the workers out. There we go. Give them their freedom. Off they go. And always the odd casualty, but don't forget bees only live six weeks, so it's not that they've died in transit, it's just that they've died of old age probably. There's another one and another one. We're doing well here because all the bees are coming out before the queen. And the only bee we've got left in there is the queen. How, whoops, there she goes. How good was that? So see, I can do it right sometimes. So now I've got two queens in two cages by themselves. And what we can do is light the smoker, get suited and booted, go over to the hive and replace the old queen and do a split. And in order to do the split, if you can just come with me here a second, what we've got is we've got a nucleus box into which we'll do the split. The nucleus box has got some frames in it, so some of those frames will go in the old hive, some will stay in here, you'll see this in a minute. And we've got a feeder on the top, because it's very important to feed with a block of icing fondant on the top there, which they can 
get out through the hole here and actually chew there. So we do need a nucleus box to do our split. So there we are. Bear with us a second. We're going to get suited and booted, light the smoker, and then we're going to go off to the hive and actually do our splits and replace our old queen. Here we are then at the hive we're going to split. Now, normally I'd have chosen a, a much warmer day to do this, but we are in the height of an English summer, and so the fact that it's not raining is uh, as good as we're likely to get. So, a little bit of smoke, just the usual tiny bit of smoke in the front. And then, this hive's actually done quite well this year. You can see there's two supers on. One's full, the other one's not got much in, I don't think. Um, but the time has come to split it, so I'm just gonna take the hive to bits in the usual manner, remove the roof, take off this first super which I think is going to be pretty heavy so I can harvest that in a day or two's time so that will be good and they've stuck some of the bottom frames to, to the tops quite gluey these bees there we go so I can take that one off that's quite heavy and then this second one that I put on in optimistic hope of a second super has got absolutely nothing in it at all. So I can just put that to one side and come back to those later. Whip off the queen excluder. There we go. And I can now start going through to try and find the old queen. So, usual thing, crown board out. Sorry, not the crown board, mm -hmm. dummy board out. And that's just very gently taking frames out, having a look at what we've got. So here we've got a frame of stores, pretty much all honey here, and some nectar there. Same on the other side, honey and nectar. So that's all stores. And I think we're gonna find quite a bit of stores because this queen has slowed down no end. Yeah, all stores again. Some nectar there. Most of those, are, they're just refilling. So no brood at all as yet. And we're off now for a well-earned cup of tea and a bit of cake. Actually, I suddenly realised we haven't quite finished yet. Um, on the way back from putting that nuke into its new position, I realised that I hadn't explained why I don't just let them produce their own queen cell in the nucleus, why I actually want to introduce a new queen. There's a number of reasons for that. If you actually allow them to produce their own queen in there, first of all, they'll do it as an emergency cell, and quite often you get what's called a scratch queen or a queen that actually isn't very good at all. The other thing is that even if you get a good queen, it's really late in the year now and I'm not entirely convinced that she's going to get mated properly. The other thing is, even if she does get mated properly, she might actually get in with some bad lads and I might end up with a queen that's a bit emotional. So if that's the case, I need to sort it out. So you're far better off putting a new queen in. So order a new queen in and introduce one if you haven't actually raised them yourself. I know queens aren't cheap, but a good queen's worth her weight in gold, and actually it's money very well spent, especially from a good supplier. Again, well, so some stores, empty cells, the queen cup there, don't think there's anything in it, no. And I am beginning to wonder if these bees have beaten me to it. So I haven't found any brood at all at the moment. If that's the case, that will put my plow. Oh, there we go. There's a frame of brood. So we've got some sealed brood here, mostly. We've got a little bit of unsealed brood there, all curled up nice and pearly white in the bottom, so that's good and healthy. So we have got some brood. Same on this side, not the greatest laying pattern in the world, but we have got some, so that's good. So you can start to see now why I'm a bit bothered that this queen is getting past it. Because at this time of year we should have a lot more brood in here. No brood in that centre one at all. They're just putting stores in there. There is some brood there. So that's good. 
but uh, not great. So I think we've actually got to the stage where the decision to requeen and also split this will probably save this hive because this certainly won't give them enough but it is to go through the winter. And we've got some brood there. And in fact, in the, some of those cells, we've actually got larva in the cells there. So we've got something, we've got enough material to work with here once we've found the queen. These frames are also a little bit old. So some of them will need changing. I'm now just looking to see if I can find the old queen because I've got to find her before I can requeen and or do a split. And some more brood there. I've got enough brood to play with. I've certainly got enough stores to play with. What I can't find at the moment still is the old queen. You can never find queens when you want them. It's the old story. You don't need to find the queen. She'll be sitting there right on the top of the frame, waving at you. you get a hive like this. I'm desperate to find the queen and I can't see her anywhere. That's beekeeping for you. The great joys or great frustrations of beekeeping depending on how you want to look at it. I don't think they've killed her because there's no sign of them actually making a new one. Loads of pollen there. No sign of the queen. So this is the last frame. And this is all stores. Which we're going to here. So we're going to have to go through the whole thing again and find her. So she's, this one's actually green. So that's what we're looking for. But uh, we'll have to look again. So here we go, going back through the hive again. See, not everything goes right. And if you're a new beekeeper, you might think that when you've been doing it for 30 or 40 years, you never have a problem. And the answer is, when you've been doing it for 30, 40 years, you just realise when you've got a problem. But nothing ever goes completely according to plan, especially when it's on camera. And there we go. But we'll find her eventually. You need to find her fairly soon because it's getting desperately close to tea and cake time. One of the things, again, looking for queens, try not to use smoke unless you can absolutely avoid it. Um, you want the bees to be on the comb so that you can find her. These bees are, are sort of a bit skitty. They are running about a bit. They're not, uh, they're not aggressive in any way, shape or form, but obviously things aren't 100% right in the hive. And as I say, with, with so little brood in there at the moment, and it's still got weeks to go before she's likely to stop laying. Oh, there she is. There we go. There's the queen. So, we're going to have to take this one out. And I've got hold of her. And then I'm just going to turn her... Oh, I've dropped her. That wasn't very good. So I've got hold of her. I'm just going to turn away and take her and say the farewells to her. And so that one's gone. And now I can start doing a split. Now the thing is, this hive's been here established so any older bees that are out flying and collecting they're going to come back to this hive and so what I need is more bees in the nucleus than in the actual hive so that frame that she was on there's some eggs in there but not a lot of brood uh, some eggs and brood on that side so I can use that, but I'm going to start at this end again and 
I'm going to be splitting it. Now there are many ways of splitting a hive. If you think you've got a better way, that's absolutely fine. This tends to work for me. That's a lovely frame of stores. So I'll give that to the nucleus. This next one is a lovely frame of stores. I'll give that to the old hive. This one is a nice frame of stores. I'll give that to the nucleus. This one is a good frame of brood. So I'll leave that for the old hive. Here, I've got a good frame of brood, or an average frame of brood, but it's okay. I'm gonna give that to the nucleus. This one here, this next one, is a reasonable-ish frame of brood. I'm gonna give that to the nucleus. This one here, an okay frame of brood. And you can already hear, these bees already know they're queenless. They're starting to roar a bit. It's not a problem. You might find the camera person in the shape of Carol backing off a bit, but it's absolutely fine. They're only just roaring a little bit. So that's got stores in, so I can put these together. I know some people <coughs> who will put a frame and a blank frame, a frame and a blank frame. I like to still keep all the brood together. And I've taken four frames out, so I'll put four frames back. It's amazing how fast they know that they haven't got a queen. <coughs> now, that's the way bees go, that's life. They're very, very good at what they do, except this one probably wouldn't have gone through the winter, so I'm actually saving this one. So here's my first queen I've got in my pocket. And what I've got to do is break off this plastic lug at the bottom, which uh, again, I can always do very, very easily unless there's a camera around, in which case it takes forever. So that's that lug off. And then what I'm gonna do is just make a hole in that not a, not a hole, but just start making an indentation with, with my knife into the uh, fondant. So it makes it easier for the bees to go through, especially if the fondant's a little bit dry. And then what I'm going to do is put that <coughs> down there between those two. So it's with the fondant at the bottom so that when they eat through there, she can get out of there and come through there. And I can put my dummy board back, pop my queen excluder on, and then I can finish off my nucleus. Now, sometimes you want to shake bees into the nucleus, but I've got quite a lot in here, so that's good. And what I am going to do though, is put another frame at the end. So they've got a full box there. Two frames of stores, two frames of brood and eggs. And then they want a queen as well. So here's my queen for this one. Again, all I've got to do is remove the plastic bit at the end. Get my knife, put a hole in there. Well, not a hole, sorry, not a hole, definitely not a hole. Just put a bit through there so that they can, it makes it easier for them to get through. And again, I'm gonna pop this in the middle of the brood here, like I did with the other one. Icing fondant size down into there I'm going to put my feeder on top of there and my top and I'm going to make sure that, that is I'm actually going to take this away to a new place uh, but I am going to write on it as to what I've done because no chance with brain like mine I can remember so this is a split with a new queen and 
the date today is the 26th of October, uh, not October, uh, wouldn't have worked if it was October, the 26th of August. And now I can put this hive back together. Actually, I don't need to put this old super back on because they're not going to bring any honey in now, but I'm just going to pop that on for now. And then once I've finished, I'll come back and sort all that out. Oh, that's a good heavy one. Because I'll harvest that at the same time. So that can go on there. And then I'll feed these. I will leave them enough honey for themselves, but I'll feed them. And so that's all done. And now what I'm going to do is take this nucleus box away uh, to a new place and pop it into a new place. And I can either take it off site or just another place on site, which is what I'm going to do. And then we're going to see, leave it all alone for about two days, come back and make sure those queens have got out and hopefully they've been accepted in their lane. So there you go, two for the price of one, how to replace an old queen and then how to do a nucleus. And I'm just gotta make sure that lid's down properly. I'll put a brick on there when I put it into its new place. So there you are, hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, actually I suddenly realized we haven't quite finished yet. Um, on the way back from putting that nuke into its new position, I realized that I hadn't explained why I don't just let them produce their own queen cell in the nucleus, why I actually want to introduce a new queen. There's a number of reasons for that. If you actually allow them to produce their own queen in there, first of all, they'll do it as an emergency cell and quite often you get what's called a scratch queen or a queen that actually isn't very good at all. The other thing is that even if you get a good queen, it's really late in the year now and I'm not entirely convinced that she's going to get mated properly. The other thing is, even if she does get mated properly, she might actually get in with some bad lads and I might end up with a queen that's a bit emotional. So please do that, don't just actually let them produce their own. It's a, a very dicey way of letting them do things. So actually, I think we've saved that hive. I really don't think that one would get through the winter and I think we've done a really good job. And for those of you who say it's not natural to do those things, well, actually we've saved the hive. We've got two hives where we would otherwise have had none. So it's better for the bees and better for the environment. So thanks for watching. We really do deserve that cup of tea and bit of cake now. So we're gonna go off and get it and uh, we'll see what happens. And if the camera's a little bit shaky, don't worry about it. Carol's trying to have a coughing fit behind the camera and actually it's not working too well. So hopefully it's not too shaky and we're all right, but we'll just see what it looks like. So see you next time on the Cotswold Bees channel. Thanks for watching and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>